So when I say God has blessed us, I mean God has blessed us. But the welfare system of the world works differently. The world welfare system of the world works on who is the victim, who is the most downtrodden, who is the most oppressed. In England, you get more money for more children you have. And so there are people who found a way to gain the system. Is it the same here? Okay. By producing multiple babies with multiple daddies because they realize there's benefit and so this woman tried to apply the same benefit system to Jesus and Jesus responded by ignoring her and then she worshipped and Jesus looked at her and said although you have found a way to do what the church does I still recognize that you are not part of the covenant and so I cannot give what belongs to the children to the dogs He'll say, I can't give what's for the church to somebody who's not even a part of me. And this woman said, you're right, but even the dogs must eat the crumbs that fall from the table that the children don't want. Oh, you missed that. What was Jesus saying here? Jesus was saying that there is a world out there that is benefiting from the crumbs of the kingdom. Oh, you didn't hear this. You didn't hear this. There are people outside of God who are benefiting and quoting scriptures in their motivational speaking places whilst they're quoting Siddhartha Gautama at the same time. And they're getting blessed from crumbs, but you have the whole love. But what if familiarity is killing us? What if we become so familiar with this Jesus? That there's a world who wants the crumbs. Come say what we did. We prophesied to you. You line up in a prophetic queue and we prophesy next. Prophesy next. Prophesy next. And then what some of you do is you go change your tie. Put a wig on, go back round and join Q2. Amen. And you say, wow, oh my goodness. What you just prophesied is a confirmation because somebody else prophesied the same thing to me two years ago. That's not a testimony. That's a reproach. That is a manifestation of your disobedience. That is God trying to tell you again and again and again. Why are you not moving into what I've spoken to you about? So you're like the pretzel stand. You come and we give you a sample. And you taste the sample. Mm. That's really good. I really shouldn't. But whoo. <laughs> then you grab your kids. You say, hey, Johnny, go get mommy a pretzel. <laughs> get yourself one too for good behavior. So Johnny goes, gets himself a pretzel. Walks back, gets one for mommy. And mommy's like, mm. And mommy, mm. back again I really shouldn't but you know just one more these are so good that's how the church is but the sample was only a taste so that you can see that the Lord is good but the problem is we're trying to get satisfied from the sample and the sample can't fill you it's only meant to be a taster of what's inside the store. And if you step inside, you'll get more. But I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you come to the sample of conferences and meetings and never step inside. The reason you never enter is because you have to buy it. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, buy your own oil. Find somebody say, buy your own oil. Now, the reason you never enter is because you have to pay for it. You, you desire to eat what somebody else has paid the price for. Yeah. 
America, this next oil, you're going to have to buy it. And the price is not set by Walmart, by the way. Is it Walmart? Costco? Cost Walmart? Should I go back? Walmart. See, I, I get too eager. So just say, Walmart, okay. The price is not set by Walmart. If you want to know the price of the oil, it's not set by Walmart. The price of the oil is set by the olive. The olive was crushed. The olive was pressed. The true price of the anointing is everything. And if you're not sold out, you become a sellout. 